the same country, shepherds living out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For they are born to you this day in the city of David, a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be signs to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was the a multi, or the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So it was, when the angel had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go into Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. When the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as they had been told. Didn't they do a beautiful job today? Come on, let's give God glory. <laughs> As they're going off, would you stand with us today? And we're going to sing one more hymn today. Oh, come, let us adore him. Let's worship the Lord together. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh,
Before you're seated, turn around to at least two or three folks. Let them know Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. <laughs> ah, he is Lord. <laughs> oh, after that, you may be seated this morning. Oh, it's wonderful, wonderful to be in the house of the Lord together today. Sister Carolyn, thank you for the beautiful job you did with the children this morning. It was wonderful. Now, sometimes we just pass over that, but you've got to understand, coordinating 30 children on Christmas morning is an act of God. Some of you came and you just brought three or four kids and you were happy to arrive here with them dressed and uh, at least their hair fairly combed. So it is, uh, it's quite a feat to, to do that. And we just want to tell you, your children are a blessing. And we pray that they are going to be raised in the nurture, the admonition of the Lord. We are believing for a Joshua generation that will raise up, one that will be leaders in leading the presence of God. And so we continue to, to pray for our children, to give thanks for, for our children. And today, especially on Christmas Day, we remember... Not only the, the children that we have, but we've come to worship for one special reason. We've come that because over 2,000 years ago, there was a child that was given not to just one set of parents, but there was a child that was given to the entire world. And this morning, I want to bring you just a, a, a few short words from the Word of God concerning a child given for the entire world. It was the only time in recorded history that a child was born not just to one kingdom, not to one set of parents, but for all mankind. And that child we know as Jesus. He was marked by a, a number of things. He was marked by angels appearing to the, the shepherds out on the hillside. He's marked by signs in the, the heaven, a, a star that hung above Bethlehem as wise men still came to see him. He set all of the, the Roman world in, in, a, in, in a panic because they heard there was a new king that was born. This child would change the world. His name is Jesus. We know that he changed the world, but today I want you to know this. If you don't remember anything else that I said, please remember these words. words. Jesus came not just to change the world, he came to change you. Hallelujah. See, it's an incredible thing about our God. Yes, he's the God of the entire world, but he's your God. He's my God. Sometimes we think of only a, a God as we come to, to get to know him. You, you probably have friends who refer to him as the man upstairs. There was a, a song years ago that, it, you know, uh, said, from a distance, God is watching us. I want to give you a little bit of a new revelation today, not according to a country song, but according to the word of God. You, you, you all right for that this morning? Because I don't want to know about Christmas because of what somebody sang or what someone said. I want to know about Christmas because of what God said to us. 
in his love letter. Because the birth of Jesus was God's love demonstrated for you and for me. And today, if you allow that, I want you to know this. We set aside Valentine's Day as the day of love. Can I just say this to you today? I think we got it wrong. I think Christmas Day should be set aside as the day of love. See, Valentine's love comes and goes. I mean, you can be in love. Yeah, I mean, especially these days, people fall into love and fall out of love more than you've ever seen. Uh, the, the word covenant has kind of gotten to be an old phrase, and, and now it's just we go by feelings. And so we feel this way for six months and feel that way for, for another six months. I want to let you know there was a day of love, a love that will never change. It's a love that doesn't depend on how good you are, if you've had a good day or you've had a bad day. You know, in relationships, love can kind of be up and down. But there's a love... That's unconditional. The love of God. That the Bible tells us while we were yet sinners, God demonstrated his love that he gave Christ. He gave Jesus for you and for me. Now, this morning, I want to talk just a little bit about what we read because it's important to hear this. And I want to share just a, a little bit of an overlap of what we did last night. Let me ask you this. How many of you were here with us last night? Just kind of wait. Okay, good. So it's only about 10% of you. So you, some of you are going to get a double blessing from that. I want to share, share a little bit of this. I want to go back to the, the scriptures that we read just a little bit this morning. From the book of Matthew, it says this. That when the angel spoke to Joseph, she said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. Because what's conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Got to catch that. It's a son. We talk about this child that's given for the world. It's conceived through Mary. The seed is in Mary, but the seed is from the Holy Spirit. That, 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 that egg that, that's supplied by Mary is now fertilized by the Holy Spirit. And the word of God goes on and says this. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. The name Jesus is taken from the old Hebrew word Joshua which simply means Jehovah saves. I want you to know today when we say that we're celebrating the birth of Jesus, we're celebrating the birth or the coming into the world of the revelation that Jehovah saves. See, Christmas is the day of love because it's the day we were all set free. It's the day that we were all set. It's the day that changed absolutely everything. See, there was an announcement that Christmas was coming. But I want to tell you something. This wasn't the first announcement that Christmas was coming. There were announcements in the Old Testament. We know them as prophecies. Last night we spoke of this. There was, there was a, a, a king, the worst king that's ever been recorded in history in, in, for the, uh, the Jewish people. A man by the name of Ahaz. Goes to, in fact, he was such a bad king, they, when he died, they wouldn't even bury him with all the other kings. They, they, they put him out. I mean, he brought all kinds of defilement to the temple. It was a mess. He was the king of Judah, and you find his story back in Isaiah chapter 7. And here's what's happened. Let me give you the, the rest of the story this morning. Ahaz, as the king of Judah, is surrounded by two armies, and Judah is about to be completely annihilated, completely wiped out. It looks hopeless for Judah. Can I pause and just ask you this this morning? Have you ever been in a situation in your life where it simply looks hopeless? You don't know what the answer is, what tomorrow is going to hold, how deliverance is going to come, how you're going to make it through. And God sends Isaiah into this situation and speaks forth a prophecy. And the prophecy says this, Ahaz, I'm going to give you a sign that you're not going to be destroyed. As wicked, as nasty as you are, here's your sign. For some of you are country fans, you get that a little bit. Here's your sign. A virgin will conceive, and she will give birth to a child. And his name will be called Emmanuel, God with us. Now, you got to catch this. This was given 700 years before Jesus came on the scene. Long time ago. What's he telling this king of Judah? He's saying, look, you think you're about to be wiped out. But you've got to understand something. 
I have already given a promise that this is not the end. And despite what it looks like for you today, Ahaz, as wicked as you are, I want to remind you of something. Here's what I want to remind you of, Ahaz. You're not going to be wiped out. Why? Because Christmas is coming. There's a Messiah that's been promised to come through to earth, and he's going to come through the tribe of Judah. See, my friends, that had already been prophesied, or Christmas had already been foretold that Jesus, the Messiah, would come through Judah. Ahaz is quaking in fear, the Bible says. He doesn't know how he's going to escape this danger. And God reminds him of the promise. See, it wasn't, still wasn't the first time that promise was given that Christmas was coming. Let me take you all the way back to the Garden of Eden. Remember when Adam and Eve were there living and walking with God? They took the apple, or whatever fruit, we call it an apple, ate of the apple, and they sinned against God. And God comes down, and he talks to Adam, he talks to Eve, and he talks to Satan, talks to that serpent. And what he tells the devil in a nutshell is this. Look, there's going to be a seed coming of this woman. There, there's going to be an offspring that's going to come. You, you're going to bruise his heel, but I've got something to tell you, devil. He's going to crush your head. See, you've got to understand, you may have won the day, but Christmas is coming. There, there may, you, you may have come in and got a place in, but you've got to understand, there's one that's coming that's going to crush you. You've got to understand, devil, that no matter how much you think you've won today, the ultimate is your defeat. Why? Because Jesus is on the way. Ah. My friends, I want to tell you something today. There's power in the promise. There's power in the promise of Jesus. Now, that was promised to Ahaz all those years ago. Judah held on to that promise. All of Israel looked for the coming of the Messiah. Now, over 2,000 years ago, that promise was fulfilled. But I want to share something with you today. There's still a promise out there. See, there's a promise that this babe that was born in a manger... Born in very humble beginnings, stable in Bethlehem, there's a promise that he's coming again. There's a promise that just like it was impossible for a virgin to conceive and give birth, no one could fake that. There's something coming that no one with all their special effects, no one, no, no producer in Hollywood is going to be able to fake this. The Bible says that this Savior who was born in Bethlehem is going to come again. He's going to split the eastern sky. The Bible says in the book of Revelation that the heavens will open and that every eye will behold him. Every eye on earth is going to see the coming of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Oh, come on, I want to tell you, there's power in the promise today. When you take that in your life and when you recognize today on this Christmas morning, no matter how tough 2016 has been, no matter how much you feel like the enemy has run over you like a truck, stop the truck, put it in reverse, and come back for seconds on your life. I want you to know this morning there's a power in the promise. The promise is there is a returning king, that Jesus is coming back for us, for his bride, for his church. I want you to know that there's hope, and as we set our eyes on Christ, it changes our life. Not only is there a promise in that he's coming, but listen to the prophecy of Isaiah. Isaiah says about a virgin giving birth to a child, something absolutely impossible. But then he says this, and he shall be called Emmanuel. Mm, mm. I got to tell you, though, when you understand this, those are some powerful words. He shall be called Emmanuel, which is God with us. He's not out there in the distance somewhere, my friends. He's here. He lives in us. See, Jesus says, I stand at the door, and if any man hear my voice and open, I'll come in and live with you. Christ is not out there, not a God in the distance who occasionally watches what goes on on earth. He lives in the hearts of each and every person who opens their lives to the Messiah. 
not just a babe who was born in Bethlehem, but the king of glory who now sits in power on the right hand of the throne of God. The Bible says that he is God with us. The promise is that God's coming again in Jesus Christ. But the promise is also that he's already come and that he lives in our lives right now. See, he's called Emmanuel. He is the wonderful counselor, the mighty God. All of these things are wrapped up in who Jesus is. And he comes to live in our lives today. And I want you to know something this morning. No matter how much you feel like you've been pressed, no matter how much you feel like you've been crushed, you've been put aside, I want to tell you this morning that Christmas morning is a brand new day. Christmas morning is a brand new day. Because it reminds us of a promise that was fulfilled. It reminds us of a promise to come in the coming Messiah. But it reminds us of a promise that we walk in right here and right now today. That the Prince of Peace has come and he lives in my heart today. I don't have peace because the world is in an incredible situation. I don't have peace because everything is right and the tax brackets are where I want them to be. And, invest, and all the mess that people talk about. They look at Wall Street. They look at gasoline prices as they drive by. And they base their peace on what the price of gas is. I want to tell you something today. That's not why we have peace in our hearts. We have peace because Christ has come 2,000 years ago and he lives in our lives today. He changes us and no matter what your situation is, no matter what you walk through, God is your peace. See, I have joy today, not because everything has gone my way, not because life has been smooth, but I've been filled with the Spirit of the living God. Emmanuel is God with me. And so I walk in the joy of the Lord, recognizing that the promise was fulfilled. There's still a promise to come, but today I get to walk in the promise of Emmanuel, that God is with me. And so Jesus is not only my peace, but Jesus today is... He is my joy. And today I want to invite you, if you've been battling through in a moment, we're going to come back and I want the worship team to lead us in that song one more time as we come and, and honor the Lord what we sang. Oh, come, let us adore him. We're going to do that one more time yes. today. We're going to adore our God and we are going to welcome his presence into our lives. You know, today so much is... On this Christmas Day, based around presents. How many of you have wrapped at least 20 Ooh. presents and that you're giving out? And they're under the tree. You might have hand cramps from all that you've, you've had to do with, uh, with presents. Today, I don't want to talk to you about presents that you put under a tree. It's about the presence of God in our lives. Today, I pray, if you've never done this, that this would be the day that you unwrap the greatest present that you've ever received, the presence of God in your lives. For the promise of Christmas is that he would be called Emmanuel, God with us. There's a debate in this world today, and you'll hear it on television, you'll see it on the internet. Was Jesus God? Was he divine? People go back and forth. Many people say he was a good man. He was a good teacher. He was a prophet that was come. Can I say this to you today? If he wasn't divine, throw out your Bible because it's a lie. The Bible says he was Emmanuel, God with us. Not a prophet with us, not an angel with us. He is God with us. It's the foundation of our faith. He is God with us. So my question for you today, is God truly with you? I know you're in God's house, and that's wonderful. But don't walk out these doors without knowing that God lives in your life. How do you do that? It's amazingly easy. It's almost too easy to, to believe. But here's what the Bible tells us that we do. We open our lives, our hearts, and we invite Christ into our lives. We turn, the Bible calls it a process of repentance. Repentance means 
not being sitting and crying over absolutely everything that you've done in the past. The word repent simply means to turn around. See, all we like sheep have gone our own way. When we turn from going our own way and turn to Jesus, we turn our lives to him. We turn our hearts from going after what we want, the things that we pursue in this life, and we turn our hearts to Jesus. A turning to God. We have signs on our walls that say a Savior is born. He's the Prince of Peace. Would you allow him as the Prince of Peace to come and to fill your hearts today? We're going to pray together. You've been sitting for a little while. Can I invite you to stand all over the sanctuary today? And I want to pray with you this morning. Maybe you're in this place and you've never actually prayed that prayer before. To turn your heart to Christ and to look to Him. Christmas Day can be a brand new day for you today. A brand new beginning. Where instead of the, the mess of this world, you receive the Prince of Peace. You receive the one who gives unspeakable joy as the children sang about. Don't let this be just a normal day. Let this be a brand new beginning in your lives. Today, let's just get alone with God. If you would just close your eyes right where you're at today. And if you've never done this before, and you're not sure today that Jesus lives in your heart, and you want to make this day, Christmas Day 2016, your moment of decision where you say, God, I want to know today that Christ lives in my heart. Here's what I want to invite you to do with me today. Would you just right where you're at, take one hand and place it over your heart. And then would you take the other and just reach up like you're reaching hold of the hand of God because he's reaching down to you today. And I see a number of hands going up today. This is your day. This is your day where Christ comes and fills and, and enters your heart. So would you pray this prayer with me today? Would you pray, Heavenly Father, Thank you for the gift of Jesus. Today, Lord Jesus, I turn, I repent of going my own way, and I turn to you. I turn my heart and I turn my life to give it to you. Lord Jesus, I invite you to come in my heart, to come in my life, to live in me as my Savior, as my Lord. This day, I live with you in Jesus' name. Now, for every one of you that prayed that prayer with me today and you meant it in your heart, this is a brand new day for you. The Word of God tells us Christ has come in your heart. And Christmas Day, you are now filled with the peace, the love, and the joy of Jesus alive in your lives. It is a brand new day. Let's join together one more time and sing with all of our hearts and adore our Lord this morning. Come, let us adore. Oh, come, let us Adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ, the Lord for you.
is the Messiah. He is Emmanuel, who is God with us. This morning, we're so glad you've taken some time to come and worship the King with us today. And so from our family to yours, we wish you a very Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year. Remember, New Year's service also begins at 1030 next week. Love on the Lord. Love one another. Go in his peace and his joy today. Wish one another a Merry Christmas and be the light of Christ wherever you go. God bless you. We love you in the love of the Lord. Jesus name.